and I'm going to be bringing the lesson today. I cannot believe it is already Halloween. This year is going by so fast to think in almost a couple days, we're going to be at a table eating turkey at Thanksgiving. It's mind blowing guys. But before we get into Halloween and how much we love Halloween, I want to talk about this lesson that we're going to get into today. All right. So are you guys ready? Cause I'm ready. So we have been talking about how much God is in control of everything. He's in control of everything and how he wants us to know and love him. With this comes an internal battle of obeying God's word. It's just like Avengers Endgame. Have you guys watched Avengers Endgame? Because I love Avengers Endgame, if you can't tell. But it's like Avengers Endgame, when they're fighting Thanos and they're going and it's just like that inside of us. It's like a battle going on inside of us to try to obey God's word. Today, we will be talking about the story of Abraham, specifically when God blesses him. So, before we recap today's lesson, check out this video. God had chosen Abraham to be the father of a large family, a great nation through whom God would bless the entire world. Abraham was 75 years old when he obeyed God's call to go to a new land. He left his home in Haran with his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, and all of his possessions and servants. They traveled to the land of Canaan. God reminded Abraham of his promise. Abraham and Lot moved throughout the land. Finally, Abraham decided to separate from his nephew Lot because the land could not support all of their people and animals at the same time. So Lot chose where he would live near a city called Sodom, and Abraham went to Hebron. In those days, four kings in the area got together and fought a war against five other kings, including the king of Sodom, where Lot lived. In the end, the four kings won against the five. Their armies took everything, all the goods and people, from the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. The kings even captured Lot and then went on their way. One survivor found Abraham and told him what had happened. Abraham gathered together 318 men, and they went after the four kings. Abraham's small army attacked the kings and their armies at night, defeated them, and chased them off. Abraham brought back Lot, many possessions, and also many people. When Abraham returned from the battle, Melchizedek, the king of Salem, came to Abraham. Melchizedek was a priest to God Most High. Melchizedek blessed Abraham and said, God has blessed Abraham. Let everyone bless God who created heaven and earth because he has handed over Abraham's enemies. Then Abraham gave Melchizedek a gift, one-tenth of everything he had. Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Melchizedek reminds us of Jesus, an even greater priest and king who lives forever. Jesus died on the cross and rose again to bless all who trust in him by providing forgiveness and eternal life. So now we're going to get into our Bible lesson. If you guys can go ahead and get your Bibles out for me, that would be great. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 14. And before we jump into Genesis chapter 14, I want to get a little overview of what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about two kings. We're going to be talking about king of Salem and we're going to be talking about king of Saddam. Now these two kings are completely different, like completely different. And if we're going with the Avengers theme, it's like Thanos versus Iron Man. It's completely different. One king sought to give and one king sought to get. One king sought to take a life and one king sought to give life. Completely different kings. Now, what does this represent to us? And what is God trying to show us through these two different kings? 
he's trying to show us that there is two different type of sides to this battle. There's the spirit of the world and there's the spirit of God. And they're in constant war inside of us and in this world. And that is why in Ephesians 6, 12 through 13, Paul talks about putting on our full armor of God. And just like I had my shield in the beginning of the video, that is exactly what God wants to do with us. He wants to give us a shield. He wants to give us words that can take down our enemies and weapons that can take down our enemies. Just like David and the Goliath. And while he was there with David, he helped David take down that giant with just a stone. Isn't it awesome how our God is and how strong he is? I think it's awesome. It's just like if we were really in an Avengers movie. We're all superheroes to God. And that just shows how control God is in everything. And that brings us to our big question. Now, if you guys remember our big question, just go ahead and say it out with me. Who is in control of everything? God is in control of everything in heaven and on earth. Nothing is outside of God's good plan for us. That's our big question. And now if you remember, if you remember what we talked about, about Abraham and the three things that God promised Abraham, you guys remember? Awesome. If you don't remember, that's all right. I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys. He promised him new land. He also promised to make him into a great nation. And he promised to bless him. So what does that have to do with God being in control? Well, God chose Abraham to be a part of his redemption and to restore and rescue sinners. He chose Abraham to be a part of his good plan. And today's story is going to take place after Abraham obeys God, and like we were talking about, it's an internal battle of obeying God and saying yes, or sometimes saying no and falling down to our flesh. And so after Abraham says yes to God's plan and obeys him, and he answers to the call to leave his home, it wasn't all peaches and cream though. It wasn't all sweet. It actually brought in some trouble into the land. And so we're going to jump in to chapter 14 of Genesis. And I'm going to read that out for you guys. God had chosen Abraham to be the father of a large family, a great nation, though whom God would bless the entire world. Abraham was 75 years old when he obeyed God's call to go to a new land. He left his home in Haran with his wife, Sarah, his nephew, Lot, and all of his possessions and servants. They traveled to the land of Canaan. God rem reminded Abraham of his promise. Abraham and Lot moved throughout the land. Finally, Abraham decided to separate from his nephew Lot because the land cannot support all of their people and animals at the same time. So Lot chose when, where he would live near a city called Sodom. Abraham went to Hebron. In those days, four kings in the area got together and fought a war against five other kings including the king of Sodom, where lot lived in the end the four kings won against the five their armies took everything all the goods and the people from the cities of Sodom. the kings even captured lot and then went on their way one survivor found abraham and told him what happened abraham gathered together 300 18 men and they went after the four kings abraham's small army attacked their kings and their armies at night defeated them and chased them off abraham brought back lot and many possessions and also many people when abraham returned from the battle when abraham returned from the battle the king of salem came to abraham Melchizedek was a priest to God Most High. He blessed Abraham and said, God has blessed Abraham. Let everyone bless God who created heaven and earth because he has handed over Abraham's enemies. Then Abraham gave him a gift, one-tenth of everything he had. This is an amazing story of how God is in control. Because Abraham believed God's promises, those three promises, we know that. And we know that because Abraham obeyed God. He obeyed him to leave and leave his home. And because of that, when he left and he walked around when God told him to do that, a priest, a king, Melchizedek, blessed him 
which ultimately was blessing God, who actually gave Abraham victory over his enemies. So who was actually in control of all of this? It was God. And we can see that in the story. When Abraham said yes to obeying God, we see how everything came together in God's good plan. And we too can sit here and be a part of God's good plan. God can do this because God is in control of everything. And God can use us especially. And he wants to. He wants you to know him. He wants you to love him as well as all of us. So how can you let God be in control of your life? And where do you see that God is actually being in control of your life? It's a good question to think about. Because like I said before, the internal battle is really hard. And sometimes life isn't all peaches and creams. And sometimes the battle is a little bit longer, and sometimes the battle takes two whole movies, like the Avengers, to even win the fight. And sometimes there can be some sad things that come in those movies, and some sad things that the war happens to bring about. But that doesn't mean that it's not in God's plan. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed the story, and I hope to see you guys next week. Bye!